until we completely stop using plastic or become responsible for the plastic waste that is generated, it's going to continue to impact human health. And if it's made its way into our clouds, because apparently it's raining plastic microns, and it's made its way into the womb of a mother and the bloodstream of babies, then it's time to change. We can't go on with business as usual. This is why behavior change from the Travel for Life program, encouraging tourists and the tourism businesses to mainstream sustainability into the sector can make a big difference. Travel for Life, of course, like I said, was launched in, on, in September 23, but it's upon us, the entire industry and individuals and stakeholders to truly adopt it and take it the distance that it needs to be taken. So I encourage all of you to understand and implement um, every action point that uh, travel life suggests. And of course, be mindful of the fact that the, a healthy environment leads to healthy human beings. And that then, of course, leads to peace, progress, and economic growth. And without a healthy planet and a healthy environment, we can't hope for any of these. Thank you for having me. Um, I had a lot more to talk about, but I know you're all hungry and would like to go for lunch. So I'm going to step into a Q&A that uh, this is going to be followed by. And I'm also going to take a moment to thank the Maharashtra Tourism Department and, of course, the state government for truly, uh, you know, making sustainability a part of the focus of the Mumbai Festival. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Dia. I, I know that you uh, are on a very, very tight schedule and you've been very kind enough to give us a little more time, even though we were running late over here. And thank you for that. My, my pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thanks. See, every chance we get to talk about the sustainable development goals, we must take it. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to. And, and that's what I see. I see that, you know, um, and I follow your work so much. And I know that sustainability is literally, if it could be in your DNA, it is in your DNA. And is that something that you were just born? You know, sometimes we say, was she born with it? No, Frisha, sustainability is not a catchphrase. You know, it's not, I mean, I'm glad it's becoming a cool uh, word to use, but it should not be used lightly. And it's a word that I think should become intrinsic to our behavior and an understanding of life itself. And you know, it's interesting. We belong to uh, a country that uh, has, has so much wisdom and knowledge and understanding of what it means to live in peace and in harmony and in balance with nature. And that's what sustainability is. It's nothing else. Sustainability is a basic understanding that all that provides life comes from the earth. And we must, as human beings, consume with respect and awareness and consciousness of that. And that's what changes everything. I remember uh, when I was a child and we, we were in school, I went to a beautiful school called Vidya Ranya, which translates to Forest of Education. And, uh, you know, we were taught, we were talked about, we were told about how excessive consumption was leading to degradation and pollution and destruction of the environment. And I'm talking about the 80s, uh, when this topic was not so cool. It was probably not even being, you know, this conversation was not being had. The first alarm bells for climate change had just started to ring. So it's taken almost 40 years for most of the world to acknowledge that, oh, climate change is real. Of course, there are still people who believe it's not. That climate to badalta hi rehta hai. But in school, we were made to understand that that pencil that we use comes from a wood that comes from a tree. And that when we are wasteful and unthinking in how we use it and we throw it away easily, then we are being disrespectful to everything that the earth provides. It's a small action. But I think it's that knowledge or that understanding or that concept that is so powerful that it just percolated into life. And like everyone else, I think 
at some point I realized that, you know, um, the idea of well-being or happiness can be uh, two things. One can be totally dri driven by economics, so the pursuit of money. And then you realize that, no, actually the things that support peace, harmony, goodwill, you know, well-being and health is the very opposite. Um, of course, money is important, and we must all earn money so that we can afford uh, the, the, the needs of our life. But then, so long as greed is for good things and uh, just and fair practices, then, you know, it's okay. But most often, um, a capitalist mindset where your pursuit to grow is only linked to money and is not linked to well-being and peace and progress and equality and all the other goals, then there's a big problem. And that's why we find ourselves where we are in our world today. I know that um, you just gave an example to everybody about your traveling bottle. And I just want to let everyone in the audience know that I know that that is just one of the many, many things that you do as not as a person that only leads a sustainable lifestyle, but also maybe if you can inspire everybody with also your sustainable travel. So if we can also delve at a personal level, you know, like everything that you also do so that you can inspire people in the audience when we hear it, we get ideas. Absolutely. I mean, uh, so one of the things that I do is I don't fly uh, business or first unless it's a, a flight timing beyond eight hours. So uh, that's, that is a significant um, shift in mindset and, uh, and also impacts you know, your carbon footprint. Uh, the other thing to do, of course, is to uh, support local uh, craft, local uh, goods, uh, eat local, uh, eat seasonal, and of course, choose uh, places to stay that are, you know, put, have put in sustainability practices and measures. So they're managing their waste, they're harvesting water, they're powering with solar, they're shifting to clean energy. There's, you know, those are some of the checkpoints that I want to make when I'm choosing my travel itinerary. Um, and then, of course, slow travel is wonderful. I love to travel by road. Um, engage and interact with local communities. And in doing that, not only do you expand your own individual wealth as a person through the experience that that offers you, but it also then empowers uh, locals, locals in every region and, and, and gives them so much more. These are some of the steps. And of course, the basic, my God, how could I forget? <laughs> Refuse all single-use plastics, carry your own bottle. I carry my own cutlery in my handbag. I have my own traveling mug. So I never have to take a disposable mug wherever, anywhere I go. Uh, so, you know, for whether it's tea or coffee on the go or it's water, you're always equipped. I've, I, and I can say this at a very personal level, I have taken a sneak peek into the Amirza's bag. <laughs> and she truly does travel with all of that in that bag. And now that we're talking about travel and, you know, coming at a more personal level also with the travel that you do, would it be fair for me to say that you probably visited every uh, wildlife sanctuary that we have in our country? Because you probably have. No, that's on my bucket list. Thankfully, <laughs> we still are, despite being the most populous nation in the world, we still have the world's largest tiger population, the world's largest Asiatic lion population, the world's largest one-horned rhino population, and uh, we have the most incredible biodiversity in our country. I mean, look at us living in Mumbai. We share our city with flamingos. We share our city with leopards. We share our city with over 250 bird species. We have the Sanjay Gandhi National Park, which is almost in the heart of the city. Um, so we coexist with biodiversity. And I remember even during the lockdown, we had dolphins that could be spotted from the gateway. Uh, and I think that there is such an incredible, vast uh, natural heritage in our nation 
that must be explored and discovered. And I've managed to visit over nine uh, wildlife sanctuaries in India. But you know, Frisha, we have over 100. Oh, I, I did Yes, we have uh, over 100 wildlife sanctuaries in India. And that is only, um, you know, so that's just 25% forest cover remaining. There was a time where India had uninterrupted forest cover and, and much more forest cover. So what's left is only 25% of which 5% is dense forest. And this is what is providing us our fresh water. This is what is regulating our climate. This is what is making our air cleaner and offsetting our emissions. Uh, and, and so it is our absolute urgent responsibility to protect and secure this existing uh, natural heritage. And of course, if we can add to it, uh, we must. And you, <laughs> you can clap. Yeah. Why are you all being so hesitant? <laughs> Go for it. Go for <laughs> it. <laughs> Let's also talk a little bit about visual representation having so much impact on inspiring people and of course setting them on a sustainable path. And I know that with the uh, Ganga, Soul of India, yeah. the show that you had done, and also in your latest movie, Dhak Dhak, which, in which you're fantastic, not only did you learn how to ride a bike, but also in one of the scenes you're shown over there picking up uh, plastic. plastic waste. And let's talk a little and, bit of- And carrying my own bottle. Yeah, 